This segment of Pack 5 is brought to you by Carbonite. It's time once again, Shannon, to check port 110. Let's do it. Pop, let's yeah, pop, it let's is. Pop the mail. Huh? Pop the mail. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. Right. The first one comes from Sonic. I just gleaked. Hello, Hack 5 team. Great show. I found you last year and have been hooked since. I've been messing around with Linux Mint and Fedora for about a year and installed it on a bunch of machines. I went to convert one Linux Mint box back to Windows XP, but Ooh, I missed. What, what? Yeah, why would you ever do that? But I missed backing up a bunch of image and video files before mm. formatting the EXT partition to NTFS. I didn't delete the files, but I did do a quick format as opposed to a complete drive format. I believe from past experience that the data is still on the drive and recoverable. Mm -hmm. Are there any Windows or Linux utilities that will help you recover files from a formatted EXT partition? I've recovered files from FAT, FAT32, and even NTFS formatted partitions, but never EXT. You know what I, I like. I, I, you, know, you know what I like is not open source. I'm sure that there are some open source alternatives to uh, to the ones that I'm going to recommend here. So I encourage you, if you're watching and you know of a better one, to definitely email us so we can kind of like hook that all up. But I like the tools from Esys. I got to say, like I like their backup tools. I like their oh, disk yeah. image tools, and they have a um, a drive recovery tool, the uh, Data Recovery Wizard, and it does ext2 and ext3. So they mention actual partitions, but I think if it has the, like, not regular expressions, but basically the, um, if it knows how to look for files in that format, then I'm hoping you should be able it to should use be it for able the drive. to, even though it's a new format. I mean, I guess you could reformat that partition back to ext3, but then you run the risk of doing even more damage. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, esys.com, it's the data recovery wizard. That's what I would try first. But I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think because I'm definitely not a data recovery expert. I just uh, I just back everything up in triplicate. And sorry that didn't work out for you. I hope XP is treating you well, I guess. <laughs> I'd stick with 7. I like 7 right now. Some people swear by XP. They're like, yeah, it's the new Windows 98. It's like, remember LAN parties even in like 2000, 2002? People are showing up <laughs> with like Windows 98 boxes to... I will never try to update my mom's computer to 7 because she would probably freak. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, she's on XP and uh, yeah. won't update it for mm. a while. All right. The next email is from Urshad from Maritis, and he asks, VPN client side. I want to connect to the office but still have my home internet connection, use my own internet connection, not the company's, as in when I connect, all traffic is sent to the office by default. Is there a way to make only only certain IPs go through the VPN and the others go to the local LAN, the home LAN, both Linux and Windows. Sure. So basically, the way that it's typically set up, a lot of clients will automatically use that new VPN connection for all of your traffic, even your internet traffic. And that may not be, it doesn't sound like it's what you want. I totally hear you, not only for a bandwidth concern, but why does your employer need to have like everything going in between? Yeah. Like, come on, you know, talking yes. about a man in the middle attack. Uh, it's the man, huh? <laughs> See what I just did there? Uh -huh. oh, I know, I know. Uh -huh. Yeah, oh, but man. the uh, I need coffee <laughs> in like in Windows when you set up a VPN network connection, it's under advanced in the properties of that connection. There's basically a checkbox that says use this as your default gateway, and that's what you're looking for. If you're on Linux, run the route command, and like I'm here on my pineapple. My pineapple I've set up with a default gateway here. You can see it says default here, and it's the IP address of my host machine, and I've set it up that way because using a little bit of IP tables, my 4G modem from T-Mobile passes through my computer and then goes to the pineapple, and then because it is the default gateway, so if like I ping something, then it goes through, and that's how default gateways work. Even though 8.8.8.8 .8 is not part of you know the local mm -hmm. subnet, so that is where you need to start if you're still confused with routes. Um, it's pretty easy. Uh, the routes and default gateways, we'll have some links in the show notes, some additional learning material. It's a little bit more than I can get into in the response to an email. But uh, yeah, that's basically where you need to start looking. So on Windows, checkbox. On Linux, route command. And otherwise, time to learn up some fun subnetting default gateway nice. funness. Sounds like a segment right there. All right, our next email comes from Anonymous. 
a uh, person, not the group. All right. What is the best inexpensive way to broadcast DSLR footage to a free broadcaster like Justin TV, Ustream, Livestream, etc.? I have a broadcast on Justin TV. I use a HV30 and HV40 hookup via two black magic cards, nice, and switch between them using VH Multicam Studio. But I also have a T3i now and I want to use that for streaming. But when I hook it up to my black magic, it has a gray ring around everything when it auto focuses. A white square in manual focus mode and onboard LCD turns off in the VH multicam studio. It refuses to take up the entire screen. Do you use your DSLRs for broadcasting or just filming? I'd like to broadcast with it and maybe install Magic, Magic Lantern to get rid of the on-screen things and then see if it will allow something. Allow him to, yeah, do, <laughs> basically he's trying to use a DSLR to do Our his computer webcam just streaming. Died. No! And and that's a, I mean, that's a novel thing. Like a lot of people are doing that now because the DSLRs take some wicked sick video because you can put some, you know, freaking awesome glass on them, and right. the next thing you know, you've got like some really ridiculous quality stuff. Um, I've not tried to do it with live streaming, and the, for this very reason, because at least the T2i is what I have, and um, the output of the HDMI actually isn't the HD video off the sensor. It's basically the EVF, I want to say, video that is going to the little preview screen on the back of the camera. Oh. Um, we just use ours for recording, not mm -hmm. for streaming. For That's one of the reasons. Now, the manufacturers like to do this because obviously it's artificially gimped the, project, uh, the product in yeah. that you know, Canon wants you to buy a more expensive video camera for that functionality. Yep. So they're kind of trying to protect some of their other product lines. It's going to get hairy here because as the DSLRs are trying to compete with each other on this new video stuff. What they keep doing is eating into their video their product, product line. line. Yep. Yeah, and but they're trying to one up each other, so they keep adding like, oh, we'll give a mic in, but we won't let Here's it. Here's an extra feature at this price, but you still can't have this one. Yeah, like they give mic in, but there's no you know manual gain control. So yeah. that's where things like Magic Lantern come in, the alternative firmwares to allow you to do things like that. Okay. Now we're talking here just about like. The big two, uh, uh, Nikon and, um, Canon. and Canon. Paul here is telling you to just go and get a Panasonic GH1 because he's weird and likes Micro Four Thirds. Because <laughs> you, you don't have, have the, the streaming problem. You can't. Oh, you can't. Out. No. Um, hmm. But what is interesting are the uh, the Sony ones. Their little Sony handy cams that you can stick their lenses on. Yeah, but then you're stuck in Sony. Lens territory. It's the same design. I guess it is the same thing because on the the um, on the Canon side, you're stuck in EOS territory yeah. of uh, lenses. It's supposed to be announcing something today. I don't know what. It's oh yeah. About, All right. Well, if something that's came right. out today as we're filming this, that yeah. is pertinent. Pop it in the lower third. But yeah, that's basically the reason you might find something from Magic Lantern. But to be honest, I think that you know, at least if I were the manufacturer and I was being a PUD and doing that and <laughs> gimping it, I'd gimp it on a hardware level so that some yep. alternative for where I couldn't come out and eat the rest of my product line. Yeah, but the cheapest option for getting DSLR video streaming would be the Sony. Okay. Yeah, and the Sony? Yeah. All right, Paul suggests the Sony. I say a regular a regular video camera. Yeah, All right, It's cool. such a shame, but hopefully that will change here in time because well, more and more Well, streaming is becoming more and more popular and the Yeah, I was watching the stream the from the Port of Oakland last to night. That's great. Need to make things th to make their customers happy because as you know, social networking changes and everything like that, they have to update their stuff. Yep. That's it's all getting people. easier. Yep. Yeah. All right. People want more. All right. So uh, as tuned. we wrap up the show, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, stay tuned. Because after the break, yeah, we will have on? trivia and Technolist photo of the week. I forgot about those. Oh, yeah. now I'm all excited. You always forget about that. I do. It's a good trivia question this week. Really? All Anyways, right. Let's find out. Stay tuned. Computer disasters eventually happen to everyone, but if you get Carbonite Online Backup before your disaster, then no need to worry because all of your files will be backed up automatically and safely off-site. And getting them back is really easy to do on any computer or your smartphone or the Carbonite iPad app. You can access them anytime, anywhere, and with Carbonite Unlimited Backup for PC or Mac, it's just $59 a year. But if you use the offer code HAK5 when you start your free 15-day trial, you get two months free if you decide to buy. All the details are over at Carbonite Night.com and remember to use the offer code HAK5 to get yourself two months free with purchase.
Hey, speaking of Windows 98 and LAN parties, wasn't there a LAN party here recently? There was. Um, Robert held another one of his LAN parties over in, I think it's Philadelphia? Awesome. Pennsylvania? I, I don't know. <laughs> one of those places. Anyway, he sends us a picture from his most recent LAN party where it looks like everybody very much enjoyed their stickers Yay. and their swag. Yay! Everybody looks to be we enjoying themselves. We love sponsoring themselves. little LAN party events. I know. I yeah. love that. It's so much fun. Yeah, and it's not even a little us. one. It's like 30 people or something go to this one. It's pretty Man. crazy. I know. I, I've always wanted to go to, oh, what was it? Um, the the one in Texas. Help me out here. Uh, oh, it the big it. one. It. Land uh, Quake Con. No, Quake Quake Con. Yeah. Yes. And the BYOC and everything. And it's oh, like. Oh, man. That sounds so fun. I used to go to East Coast Land. Back when they did that, yeah. uh, back in Virginia. I went to that one. That was fun. Well, in their heyday, they had like 300 people, and it's like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm it just really so died. sad about LAN parties. It's like, come on, yeah. people, put your Xbox down and get your computer out to your friend's yeah, house. Yeah, get your computer out. That's how I learned monitor. networking. <laughs> you know, we were just talking about routes and stuff. Like that's You learn it because you need to know it. Because yep. if you're not playing <laughs> Unreal Tournament 99, no one's having fun. Mm -hmm. So true. Get the network working. Anyway, if you guys have pictures, you can send them over to feedback at hack5.org. Woohoo! Share them with us. Yay, it's trivia time. Trivia time. Last week's trivia question was, this humorous RFC of the Internet Engineering Task Force describes a communication and control protocol suite designed for allowing infinite numbers of monkeys with infinite numbers of typewriters to produce the entire works of William Shakespeare. Yeah, that was RFC 2795. Yeah. What a great RFC. <laughs> a lot of people sweet? answered that one right. Yeah, it was a good one. Uh, this week's question is, this term is generally used to describe the novel works of William Gibson, Bruce Sterling, Pat Cardigan, and others. All right. Yeah, you probably know this one I if you think, think about I it. I think I do. Yeah. I think everybody does. You so. can answer over at hackfive.org slash trivia for a chance to win some swag. Yay! Also, remember to subscribe to us and to follow us, and all of that stuff is now over at hackfive.org slash follow. That's where you can find our Twitters and all how of your to get the links. episodes delivered to you on a weekly basis. Yes. It's good stuff. And you can get your favorite Hack 5 goodies over at hakshop.com, like the USB rubber ducky, our new Wi-Fi adapter, which now comes with a free DVD. Next week. One next week? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I guess I better start flashing those, huh? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's sick. Well, we'll be talking about this all next week because there's some really cool, fun stuff we've done to it. But uh, anyway, I will leave you there until next week. Uh, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Watch out for switchblades. Well, oh, good. trust your technolust. <laughs>